Hey everybody. So today we're gonna to talk about um, an experience that I got to have back in 2017, I believe, in August. Um, I went. I got to go to a camp called Camp Starlight um, whenever I was working with CARE, and I'll talk about CARE in another video and some experiences I had there that were really awesome. Um, but yeah, one of my coworkers had told me about Camp Starlight um, and how amazing it was um, and I was like, okay, I, I'm gonna try this. So I, Camp Starlight is um, a camp that was started in 1999 and uh, it's in Portland, Oregon. The camp itself is, is about, I think like 45 miles away from Portland um, in a more remote location. Um, so what Camp Starlight does is they bring together over 50 kids uh, every year around August time um, and they get to go and do camp for a week. Uh, now these are kids that are either HIV positive themselves or they have a family member who's HIV positive. So someone who's directly affected by HIV, um, a kid. And I think the age ranges are like five to 17. Um, and yeah, it's a really amazing, amazing camp. Um, so I got the opportunity to do this and I was really excited whenever they told me that I was gonna be accepted as a volunteer. Um, I had to go through an interview process. I think I just did like one phone interview and they kind of asked me like why I wanted to be a camp counselor, um, you know, what this means to me, uh, you know, experience I had with kids, things like that. Um, and of course, you know, I told them that this would mean a lot to me because I love working with kids and I have HIV myself and I think I'd be perfect for this. So they do the screening and everything, background checks, and I got accepted. Um, so I got to go to Portland for a week in August of 2017. Um, I, I think that's the date, yeah. Um, so, and this was like right before I went to Australia, so it, I think it was 2017. Um, so just a really amazing experience for me to have right before going to Sydney, um, the year before. Um, yeah, so I got to go through work. Um, they reimbursed me, I think, for maybe the flight and the hotel, I can't remember. But either way, like, it was a really great experience. Um, I think I might have actually just been able to use my... Uh, work time yeah, while I was there. Yeah. So anyway, so I think I paid for it myself, but it was a really cool experience. Um, so I got there and I stayed in Portland for that Friday or Thursday, one of those. And I kind of just walked around the city and did some stuff around the city. Um, the next day I got to go to camp. Um, I got picked up in the city by one of the camp counselors. I think Gretchen is the one that picked me up. I can't remember. Sorry, my memory is really bad. Um, I can remember certain things, but not all of it. But yeah, so I got picked up from my Airbnb in Portland by, I believe, Gretchen. Um, and then we went and picked up all the other volunteers. We went and got Starbucks and kind of just bonded on the way there. It was like an hour drive or so, um, like 45-ish miles. Um, and just got to bond with everybody and really get to know them. Um, and then I got to camp, and the whole first day is like kind of getting to know what HIV is and, you know, how to make a camp a fun experience for the, the campers. Uh, also getting to know your camp counselor that you're going to be working with. Um, so I was like a counselor in training. Um, and then I had a, a, another person who was an actual, like, uh, the head counselor because he had been there before. And his name was Tyler and he was awesome. Um, so yeah, so we got assigned the Twinkler boys. So the Twinkler boys were like ages five to eight or nine I think so they were the youngest um they were an awesome group um it was just really cool to like do things with these kids you know who are I mean they don't understand you know they're very young they don't understand that their life is affected by HIV um you know some of them you know their family members had HIV some of them had it themselves um I know that there were some kids at the camp as young as five or six that had HIV and that, that was probably the hardest part for me because, um, you know, just knowing, like, I have HIV, but, you know, I'm older and I can understand how it affects me. And these kids are so young, you know, and they don't even know yet and they don't understand. And, like, you know, they're taking a pill every day. Um, and and they, they don't know, you know, they're just living their life. Um, but, yeah, it was really cool to see how... Um, the camp counselor and I, we really came together for these kids, and if they had to take their pills, you know, we made sure they did that, and just made it, like, a fun activity to do. Um, yeah, it was really cool. 
So um, yeah, we did like different activities for camp. Um, we all stayed in a cabin together. Tyler and I bunked together and then the other kids had rooms. Um, and we got to do activities like kayaking. Uh, I think it's called a music class. Uh, music class, arts and crafts. Um, we did s'mores one night. And one of the cutest things I remember is that we got to um, we got to sneak into the cafeteria one night. Like the older kids knew, like the fifteen to seventeen year olds knew, like that they could go and get stuff, and it was like part of the experience. But something really cool for the younger kids was that we got to sneak in and sneak sweet treats. So what they did is they I think they put in some cookies and milk, like the other camp staff put it in, and we all got to go in. Um, and sneak out uh, some some cookies and everything. And the kids were so excited because we were being sneaky and everything. Um, and it was super, super cute. Like they were so excited. Like that was probably one of the things they were most excited about. Um, so we got to do that. We also got to race um, like the derby cars. I don't, I don't remember what they're called, but like the ones they kind of do in Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts. Um, so we got to do that. I think it's called a Pinewood Derby actually. Yeah. Um, so we got to do a Pinewood Derby, and it was really cool because the kids loved that. They got to build their cars and everything. We helped with that, uh, Tyler and I did. And it was really cool because they just got so excited over all this stuff. And it really just made me appreciate, like, life in a different way, you know? Um, I guess I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, what else did we do? We also got to do um, a thing where we got on the rope and we swung around like one of the older um, like camp activity directors. They pushed us on a rope swing and we got to swing around like the, uh, the foresty part that we were in of where the camp was. And that was really cool. That was actually one of my favorite activities to do because it just felt so freeing. Uh, you know, you're kind of swinging around and you know, just, it was cool. And the kids loved it. They, that was another one of their favorite things they did. Um, and then the last night we were there, we got to do um, a talent show. And you know, the kids get up there and they do like cute little things like they, you know, like they'll dance and they'll sing. Um, and it's, it's really cute. And um, uh, the one, one thing that was really sweet um, and it made me cry because y'all who know me know I'm really emotional. Uh, some of the girls who I bonded with who were in the, like the 14 to 17 year old group, um, they, sang a song for me. I think they sang Firework because of my tattoo. That's what it was. So they sang Firework to me and I was like crying so hard. Um, and they were like, we're going to miss you so much, Mitch. Um, cause I really bonded with them. Like I bonded with all of the campers. Um, and it was just an amazing experience. Like it felt like a family. Um, like I never had a day where I felt like I was out of place. It, it was one of the first times, um, like that I could really remember in recent years ever since I gave up drinking and everything because of my HIV um, that I really felt like I was part of something and that people really accepted me um, and everybody did like everybody was so loving and accepting it was just an incredible experience and I would I would love to do it again um, I obviously didn't go back for 2018 because I was in Australia I didn't go back last year because I was moving to DC and this year it's probably not going to happen because of COVID-19, but I definitely want to go back. Like I will love the experience and like talking about it now, I just, I'm reminiscing and it, it's making me smile. Like, you know, I, I genuinely feel happy, like thinking about it. Um, and it gets me like, uh, I've been trying not to cry like this whole video, but um, it makes me like emotional too, you know, cause it was just such a beautiful time um, to be with people and just kind of forget about, you know, the, the harsh reality that, you know, some of these kids are living with HIV or have parents or family members that have HIV. And obviously, you know, we know that it's very treatable and, and people can live their whole life with it, but it, it just breaks your heart, you know, to hear, like, that kid so young are affected by this, you know? Um, and I guess it really put things into reality, like, that this is real, like, this really does affect kids, too, not just men who have sex with men, like a lot of people think, and I always knew that it affected different age ranges and different people um, of all different backgrounds, but it really hit home and really set in whenever <clears throat> I went to camp and, and saw these and worked with these kids. 
But yeah, so one of the kids in my group, I think he was the youngest one, he was just this ray of light and he was um, just amazing. Um, you know, and he doesn't know like that his life is affected, you know, um, by HIV. Um, yeah, it's just really incredible. Like, I just absolutely loved this experience being at Camp Starlight. Um, and another thing that we did on the last night for the talent show is um, they sang True Colors by Cindy Lauper. And I can't remember what else we sang. I think what the world needs now is love. I think that's what we sang. But True Colors, and I learned that, I guess, Cindy Lauper wrote that song for people affected by HIV and AIDS. And I was like sobbing, like sobbing because like, you know, one, like I was like really feeling the lyrics more than I ever felt for that song. And then two, like, just thinking I'm going to have to leave this camp and, you know, leave these kids. And it, it was just amazing. Like, it was very touching. And the kids came over to me and they were, like, hugging me. And it was, it was a really beautiful moment. Um, yeah, thinking about it right now, I'm just thinking about how amazing it was. And that, like, this experience is seriously probably one of my favorite things I've ever done in my entire life. Um, yeah, it was really cool. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I also wanted to let you all know, I know these are tough times right now, but um, I think this is a really incredible organization, and if you'd like to donate to them, because they are a not-for-profit organization, um, you can look up Camp Starlight Portland, Oregon, and you can go and donate on their page. There's a way to donate if you just scroll like towards the bottom. Um, so it's Camp Starlight Portland, Oregon. Um, it should come right up. And you can donate to them um, to help, you know, fund and keep things going. Um, yeah. So, like, all the counselors and I, we weren't paid anything. Um, I don't know about the head counselors and the head staff. I, I know some of the staff, obviously, you know, they get paid because they're working for a not-for-profit. And if they're putting it on, you know, that's their job. Um, but I know that all of the counselors and I at least were not paid anything. Um, so, yeah, so definitely... Um, donate to them. They're an incredible organization. Um, I really hope to go back one day. I loved it so much. Um, met the most incredible people. Um, yeah, it was amazing. Anyway, so y'all can definitely put some comments at the bottom, you know, like what you think about it or ask me questions about it if you want to know more. Obviously, I'm not going to give like names of people except for my counselor, you know, because we work together. I'm not going to give the names of the kids and stuff like that because that would be disrespecting their privacy. Um, but if you have questions about, like, you know, activities or what the experience was like with different things or just, just whatever you want to ask, um, leave awesome comments, too. Um, I'm still thinking about making follow-up videos if I get enough comments. I haven't gotten too many yet, but um, it would be really cool to do, like, a follow-up video. Um, yeah. So, uh like this video, share it, um, ask more questions if you have any questions, and I will see you all for video number five next week. Bye!